life was good, I write was hood, I might get to it, not out the woods, so bro, I got to do it, be a monster, that's why my mantra is being onslaught, from the long star to my lungs. Alright, what is going on YouTube, it is your boy Jerese back at it with another episode of Real Talk. And today's video, oh god, it's gonna be a doozy. So, ah, today's video, uh, New York City, D.C. plead for federal aid as red state governors bust in thousands of migrants. <laughs> Alright, so where do, where do I even begin to unpack this? So, ah, so you have two cities begging the government, so government begging bigger government for money for a problem that they placed upon themselves by making themselves sanctuary states which will be the quote-unquote place for migrants to come to if they make it to the united states right that's hence why they're sanctuaries you know a sanctuary is safe it's nice it's you know all of those things but you know it is what it is so without further ado let's take a look at this video I don't think anything is more anti-American uh, than shipping people on a bus, 45 hours. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Uh, um, okay, before I even go on, like, so from South Carolina to California is like 35 hours. So from Texas and New Mexico to New York and D.C.? It's definitely not 45 hours. So I don't know where he got his math from. I don't know if he passed land nav. I don't know. But this guy is an idiot. <laughs> but anyway. Any of the basic needs that they have a direction. Of course. Think about that before they got here. Like, they should have thought about that before they got here. A nation. It was just Texas and Arizona that bore the brunt of all of the chaos and all the problems that come with it. Now the rest of America is understanding exactly what is going on. Yeah, so, right. If you don't live in a border state, you don't get this issue, right? Like, if you don't live in Texas, um, what, Arizona, Cali, you don't understand 100%, like, how bad the illegal immigration issue is, right? If you don't live there, you just don't get it. And... Basically, what Greg Abbott is saying, even though I am not a Greg, Greg Abbott fan, I do not care about the guy. Um, but what he's saying is, hey, basically, you going to see what we dealing with when we bust all these illegals to your state because you want to tempt them with offers of sanctuary cities, assuming that they make it to your city slash state. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but hold on. Uh, uh, do -do -do all right, uh, come over here, right? California, I mean, cool, that's a border state. Cool, Colorado, nope. Connecticut, definitely not. Illinois, that's pretty far away from Mexico. That's far, that's far. Uh, New York, New Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, Washington, District of Columbia. So, the only state that is literally even remotely close to Mexico is going to be California. Because the rest of these states, Colorado, right here, you got to go all the way up through New Mexico to get there. Uh, Connecticut, that's uh, somewhere up in here. <laughs> Illinois, all this is like the northeastern part of the United States. Oregon, that's top left. Rhode Island, top right. District of Columbia, far east. <laughs> Washington State, Vermont, that's northwest. So none of these states are even remotely close to Mexico, so... All right, this video is going to go on too long if I sit on this topic all day, right? So, here's the game plan, right? Let me break it down. Let me let me, uh, let me me keep it simple, stupid, because, yeah, I do have a lot of comments that say my videos go on too long, right? So, the game plan is, hey, guys, if you make it to here, 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 or here, or, like, over here, then, you know, you can come over here and live and, you know, the city and local government won't try to arrest you and deport you, but if you get caught by ICE, uh, hey man, uh, we didn't snitch on you, man, we didn't rat you out, they just got you, bro, like, they got you on their own, like, you was lacking somewhere. That's essentially what they're trying to do. But, anyway, let's get back to the video. 
Joining me now, Maria Hinojosa, president and co-founder, president and founder of Futura Media and author of Once I Was You, a memoir of love and hate in a torn America. I love when white people try to speak Spanish or non-Spanish people try to speak Spanish. Hold on. Ah, it's a black dude. Ah, God damn it, Duro. Ah. Here's in an abandoned hotel. Oh my. And this country, they did during the whole days and as we were John fight. Okay, ho before I do that, and I know that my friend and you historians, I'm not, right? But I did happen to live through a moment in history, which is when the sanctuary movement was created in the United States, or the modern version, right? It was created by Reverend John Fife in Arizona and another cowboy uh, uh, rebel philosopher. The whole idea behind sanctuary, because you used that, Jason, as we were talking, is that it was created so that the United States would not repeat the mistakes, what they did during the Holocaust, mm -hmm. when they turned away Jewish refugees, right. who at that right. point, the mainstream media criticized as dirty and scary and communists, and this country turned them away. Now we're like, oh my gosh, we should never have done that. Because, oh my gosh, there's the Statue of Liberty saying that this is a sanctuary. So what is it? Um, and also, that's, Jason, I... That's not what the Statue of Liberty is, but, you know, we're... we Okay, uh, see, here's the problem I have with people that think like her. We are under no shape or form obligated to take in people of another country. Ever. I know this country's great. I know it's awesome. America's pretty freaking good. But just because we're one of the best countries in the world to live in does not mean we are obligated to deal with every other freaking group of people in the world. That's just not how it works. Like, we don't have to take these people in because of a war that's going on in their country. We don't have to take these people in because they're starving. We don't have to take these people in because, I don't know, there's a freaking famine running across their country. And, I don't know, they got, like, tuberculosis 3.79 and it's uncurable and the only cure is like in reno nevada or something like that we we are not obligated to do any of that but these liberal-minded people are hey we have to take in these people because reasons and it's the right thing to do meanwhile they don't care because at the end of the day they know somebody else is gonna foot a bigger bill for it like oh yeah just bring in all the illegal immigrants and just Tax the rich! Does that ring a bell? I just have to say, you know, we, we, we love our fellow journalists, but the New York Post should be ashamed of this, of this kind of baiting, okay, where it says, you know, border to Broadway, and it's just like, oh my God, they're living because of New York taxpayers in an abandoned hotel. Oh my God, these illegal people, they're not illegal, New York right. Post. They are not illegal. Okay, are you 100% sure that everybody who they're referring to in this article is a 100% legal U.S. citizen, or are you just trying to grandstand? Like, they're not illegal. They're legal. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. None of them are illegal. They are legal. And, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll even play devil's advocate. I'll play devil's advocate. Assuming that they are legal, right? Assuming that they are legal, the people that are being housed in this hotel that you're referencing in this article, assuming that they are legal United States citizens. So are you saying that there's no taxpayer money anywhere that's being spent on illegal immigrants? Is that what you're saying? Because it sounds like that's what you're saying. It sounds like you're trying to do the whole uh, moral high ground of these people aren't illegal and this isn't taxpayer money being spent on them. But... I mean, taxpayer money gets spent on legal citizens all the time. That's kind of how the country works, you know, unemployment and things of that nature. So people generally don't have problems with money being spent on legal citizens, but, you know. But I guess it's just race baiting and things of that nature. Legal human beings. And you know what's the hottest ticket right now on Broadway? They're not illegal, New York right. Post. They are not illegal human beings. And you know what's the hottest? Yeah, um, and notice how she framed that. Illegal human beings. Nobody said they were illegal human beings. They said they were illegal immigrants to this country. As in, they resided in another country, they crossed the border, and they are inhabiting this country 
illegally because we have laws. I know there's these things written on paper. It's kind of like a set of rules that you have to follow and abide by to participate in this society. But I know a weirdo liberal like you just thinks, oh, well, they're Mexican or whatever the fuck. So just just let them in. And, you know, we'll deal with it later, I guess. Hot is ticket right now on Broadway. OK, because actually immigrants and refugees like me and an immigrant in Mexico, we love Broadway. What's right. the hottest ticket? The Kite Runner, written by an Afghani yeah. refugee. So let's skip to the part where they are being welcomed and they're like, oh my God. Okay, a refugee. A refugee is different than an immigrant who is just trying to cross the border to, I don't know, get a better life for themselves. But again, we're not obligated technically to take refugees either. We don't have to, but... I don't know. The entitlement amongst liberal-minded people is amazing. God, you're going to be the next incredible writer or poet or philosopher of the United States because we are welcoming you. And notice she said a bunch of artsy-fartsy shit, like nothing to do with like STEM or anything like that, right? You're going to be a, a poet or a songwriter or whatever. Like that's, that's the problem with minority mindsets a lot of the times. Like, they want to be freaking actors and celebrities and songwriters and shit. And it's like, no, just get a normal job. I don't know, find something in STEM and just keep it pushing. Dr. Greer, um, this started as a political stunt by governors in Arizona and governors of Texas, but it's called... You mean kind of like how the states that enacted the sanctuary state policy in its current form was a political stunt to get illegal immigrants to come over here? and attempt to reach these um, sanctuary states. And then once they do cross the border and they're here and then you deport them or whatever, then you go, oh God, you guys are racist. You guys are deporting these illegal immigrants who are just coming to this country to try, try to better their lives, even though shit is fine in their own country. It just happens to be a worse economically stable country. But I mean, technically there's nothing wrong. It's just, the short end of the stick. Costing taxpayers in Arizona and Texas millions of dollars, right? Like they're not putting these migrants on a mega bus, right? They're spending thousands and thousands of dollars to send them here, you know. Yeah, because the government overpays for everything. And there's no way that it's $2,000 per migrant and $1,400 per migrant. Like there's, there's no way I can make it to... I can make it to Washington, D.C. on freaking $400. Like, there's no way. Like, there's no way. Like, I can make it to Washington, D.C. on 400 alone. Like, take off that grand. Like, it'd probably be like, I don't know, it's like 50 bucks to fill up my tank. So, like, my car is going to get around, like, what, 40-something miles to the gallon. So, if I put it in the eco mode... And so, yeah, so, so yeah, I could, I could literally make it to Washington, D.C. on like 400 easy. So I don't know why government overspending as always. One, do you think that's going to actually have any consequences for them back in their home states? And two, how sustainable a plan is this when you're dropping $1,400 per rider to bring people from, from Texas, different parts of Texas to New York City? Right, Jason. I mean, the conservative estimate is about $80,000 per bus trip. But we know that, you know, racists don't mind paying this money. We saw this with, you know, our parents and grandparents' generations when schools were, you know, forced to integrate and they refused. So oh, okay. And then another thing, right? Look at her title. Look at her title and it'll give you all the information you need to know about her. Associate Professor of, guess what? Political Science. Fordham University. Never heard of it. Coincidence? Probably not. <sighs> so they would ship, you know, African Americans to other states to attend college because they didn't want to integrate schools in, say, South Carolina or Virginia or Georgia. So racist. You know yeah, and guess what? That was probably for the better because you shouldn't force people to integrate with other people if they choose not to. Just throwing that out there. 
Kind of sounds like what's going on with this whole busing situation. Sounds like you guys don't want to integrate with those illegal immigrants and y'all are using the guise of, oh, it's like 80,000 a person or 80,000 a bus and $2,000 per person to send them there. And it's like, well, if y'all love, if y'all love migrants so much, hey, y'all front the bill. In your liberal cities, your sanctuary cities, y'all should be more than willing to front the bill to bring in these migrants because y'all are the ones that want them there because y'all are a sanctuary city, right? But I'm going to just end it right there. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's good enough. But as always, guys, y'all already know what to do. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Did I make a little bit of sense? Did I make a lot of sense? Did I make too much sense? Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. And y'all know I reply to most of my comments because... You know, it's it's just me. I live in my comment section. And I'm trying to get back into the groove. So comment down below. And I want to see my regulars in there. Natashka, Shelby, um, who else? Matthew. Y'all know who y'all are. The people that was rocking with me before. I better see y'all come back when I start posting every single day again. Except maybe like Saturday and Sunday. But at least Monday through Friday I'm posting. So it is what it is. But with that, it's been your boy Jerese back with another episode of Real Talk. And I'm changing my intro and my outro this weekend. But with that, that's all I got. I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm out.